Harrington here with John Ceno. Yes, John Ceno Evil. What's up, guys? We are going on this ride on this train. <laughs> Let's get on, yes, welcome to Up Next. If you're listening to this, this is in fact the Up Next feed, postwrestling.com, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. My uh, normal partner in crime is busy on, an, on another plane um, pulling a heist. Uh, no, uh, he asked me today, hey, should I watch this movie? Should I join in on this review? And I gave him an honest to God answer. No, no, you no, you don't need to. It's not it's not worth it. <laughs> Baby, it's times like this. Well, I will probably uh, tag in and, uh, you know, take the finish, as they say. Yikes. So, uh, yeah. So he's just doing a bunch of chores around the house and refused to watch Money Plane. But I, I digress. I, I, I envy him. I envy him. <laughs> Brayden Harrington and John Ceno are here. Have no fear to chat all about Money Plane. Now, this is an NXT podcast, so we do talk about wrestling. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash up next, where we do so much uh, more than just NXT. We go back in time and watch NXT. We do like pa- retro pay per view reviews of WWE, ECW, WCW, all that stuff. The summer schedule is all up there on, on there, and I'll, I'll mention the shows before we end the show today. But, John, you are a part of our Patreon because you started a new show. Re- uh, reviewing AEW Dark. Do you want to quickly talk a little bit about that before we get on this plane? Yeah, it's it started off as AEW Dark, but I'm also watching all these shows that nobody else wants to watch, like 205 Live, Main Event, uh, the AEW Women's Tag Team Tournament, whatever's on that I can catch for the week. Just a quick recap, more, no more than 20 minutes. I know there's a lot to watch in wrestling, so I was like, you know what? Why not give it, everybody just a 20-minute little recap of everything? You never know what you might miss. You might miss a cockroach going to uh, wow. you know, Phoenix's jacket, <laughs> which... Uh, was trending on uh, Twitter yesterday, it looks like. Yeah, so Shot in the Dark, it's it's on our Patreon, but it's free. So all you gotta, all you yep. got to do is click the link to the Patreon, and you can listen to it for free. Yes, it is free. So listen to John Ceno, you good sir. Um, not only are you are you doing that show, but you have your own podcast, where you're talking all about like horror movies and all sorts of stuff. Um, I was listening to the other one, the, the second episode the other day about uh, horror and hip-hop. You did a yep. horror wrestling one, which yep. I know a lot of people crossed over. Yeah, absolutely. Every week we try to pick a different topic. Uh, episode three just went up this week where we pretty much talk about COVID and how COVID has affected movie theaters, um, kind of like the history of movie theaters with driving theaters making a comeback, what the future holds, digital movies, whatever the case may be. I figured it's a real topical thing to talk about. So we figured, uh, why not talk about it? And yeah, there's new episodes every Tuesday. Zombie Pod. Check it out. Zombie Pod. Yes. Uh, friend of Up Next. You are you are our third man. And uh, you've you've taken this quarantine to do something productive, and you've created a podcast, and and you keep getting better at podcasts. So we we love to invite you on whenever we can because you've been killing it, man. So thank you uh, right away off the top. Thank you for all the stuff you've done no, for for us course, here at I, Up Next. I feel like I'm a young lion, you know, making his way through the dojo. I even got WH Parks uh, okay yesterday saying I'm doing a good job. So. You know, I'm making my ways up the ranks. You know, I'm gonna- uh, I mean, that doesn't really matter. Uh, w. H. Parks thing. Uh, you know, he, you know, he likes to be the guy who's got uh, hot takes, who or maybe who likes to shoot from the hip. But uh, no, I mean, if W. H. says you're doing a good job, then you're probably doing a good job. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks yeah. for everybody for the support. Whether it be you guys, uh, John and Way at W. H. Park, and nothing but support. Brandon from New Jersey is tweeting my stuff. So when see, Brandon likes no, it, see, that, yeah, that's, that's the just- true. That's the true. That's how I gauge if I did a good job. If I do a podcast, we did Freddie Got Fingered with Davey, myself, and Wei Ting. And Brandon from New Jersey was like, yo, I think that was the best pod you've ever done. So I said, it's the best pod I've ever done. Uh, up go. on our pa- Patreon. We put that out last month for Extreme Month. But I feel like the movie we are here today to talk about should have been part of Extreme Month, if yeah. you will. It's not quite a horror movie, John, which is your uh, 
your wheel park. Your, uh, your li- it's, your... it's pretty horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrendous. <laughs> a lot of things happened in it that uh, kind of scared me in, in more ways than one. So, yes, we are an NXT podcast, but we talk all about wrestling. New Japan, WWE, AEW. Uh, AEW reviews every Thursday as well on the Patreon. But WWE wrestling, of course, um, wrestling fans love to watch movies with wrestlers. Now, I'm from Toronto. My whole life living here. Edge, Adam Copeland has been one of my favorite wrestlers to watch. Uh, in fact, we're doing our SummerSlam 2005 review on the Patreon, and it's peak Edge when he's just a dick with Lita and Matt Hardy. Oh, man, he was he was just so evil to watch back in 2005. Fifteen years later, WWE superstar Edge has returned to the WWE. But not only has he returned in the Royal Rumble, that was the second coolest thing he's done <laughs> all year. Uh, I would say the, the the number one thing he's done all year is this movie, Money Plane. <laughs> and I like how they they use the 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 idea that you know COVID is shutting down movie theaters. We couldn't release it to theaters like they were going to. <laughs> so we're gonna release it straight to video on demand. <laughs> oh, I would have I would have went to see it's this. Not gonna th- be in theaters. What theater was gonna play this? <laughs> I imagine I watching this. I pro- I, I, oh my god! I would definitely see it in the theaters, but would theaters actually play this? Um, no, not, let's not talk about watching it in theaters. Imagine watching Money Plane on a on a plane. Oh my god! Imagine that. <laughs> so, Money Plane is this movie that came out, and we we love to watch and review movies on our Patreon, but we love to watch and review movies with wrestlers in it. So this is kind of a a free show here on the free feed, um, just to talk about this movie wrestlers in movies and if and it's it's edge so i think edge is a fantastic wrestler his return in the wwe in 2020 uh you know he kind of got slowed down by this whole pandemic thing considering a lot of people were into his his comeback but he still managed to to put off an interesting you know program with randy orton and you know say what you will about the greatest wrestling match ever but i i actually i actually fucked with it i i thought it was a lot of fun and i thought it was as a wrestling fan it was the opposite of a slap in the face it was like this is what we can do in a pandemic era so they tried but i i always thought of edge as a good actor and uh it's uh well, it doesn't really shine through in this movie. <laughs> hey, how many people can say they had the greatest wrestling match ever and the greatest movie ever in the same year? Come on. Come yeah. On. Okay. So, uh, you know, this movie is about something that takes place on a plane. Now, when I think of, like, types of movies like this, I think of, like, Die Hard 2 takes place in an airport, I guess, or airplane, airport, 19, Con Air. whatever. Yeah, Con Air, right? Or, or, or Snakes on a Plane. Yeah, that's a good we, one, right? We kind of we kind of see a snake in a plane later in this movie. We kind of do. Yeah, we kind of yeah. don't. We kind of don't actually. Uh, yeah. Hey, so <laughs> is, is is this a spiritual sequel or spiritual successor to Money Train? Oh, Woody wait. Harrelson and Wesley Snipes. It's kind of almost the same idea in a way, yeah, it's, but a it's, plane instead of a train. Yeah, it's like that. It's definitely a, a sequel to Money Train. But if you look on IMDb, it says that Money Plane follows Money Train, which is just straight <laughs> bullshit. I don't know who who wrote that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, no, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with this movie. Uh, okay, so if you're still listening to the, if you still managed to get this far into this podcast, Money Plane came out this year, but it was the trailer that, like, kind of got Twitter, especially wrestling Twitter, just all batshit crazy. So not only is Edge in this movie, but Kelsey Grammer, to some people, he is known as Frasier. Yep. So to to me, this already made me want to watch this movie. But if you're one of the people who who maybe just listen to the reviews and don't want to watch this movie, I do not blame you at all. One second, but the trailer is entertaining enough. You kind of get the best bits in it. So highly recommend watching it if you haven't already. But yes, Money Plane 2020. Let's go now. First things first. The director of this movie is a Lawrence brother. Andrew oh, Lawrence. A lot of Lawrence in this movie. Every Lawrence, Lawrence brother mania. <laughs> Only Lawrence we don't see is Lawrence Fishburne, but every other brotherly love cast member is in this movie. Oh, uh, okay. So Lawrence, the Lawrence brothers are fucking amazing. And I didn't know they had anything. I didn't look this movie up before yeah, watching it. I had no it. idea they were involved. So I saw the director <laughs> was, and- I'm like, Andrew Lawrence. And I looked it up and it's the youngest brother from the Lawrence brothers. He's the youngest one. So yeah. he's like, he's in brotherly love with all of them. Uh, I know he's in Mr. Bean, the movie, I think. I'm pretty he sure he's the voice. Which- called uh, Confessions of a Womanizer with the Bella Twins and Gary Busey. So that might be something oh. else we might need to review down the line. Oh, that's yeah, another bad. wrestling tie-in that's probably terrible. 
Uh, I know that he was he was in uh, what what is is he TJ from Recess? Like he's the voice. Yeah, the voice. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's the I voice of TJ Detweiler. Yeah, but the Lawrence Brothers did like a series of movies. Now the rest of these Lawrence Brothers actually do have parts in this movie, but I didn't know that this guy was like writing or directing movies and stuff like that. But uh, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> I'm already in. I'm already in. A Lawrence brother is directing Edge and Kelsey Grammer in a money plane. I'm I'm in. It starts off with, uh, we hear the voice of Edge, Adam Copeland, and he's talking about uh, basically plans to a job, working a job. You see, there's always, uh, there's always things that you need in a, in a, in a job. You need a great team. You need proper diversions because the way things are and the way things appear are two different things. And uh, we'll, go, we'll, we'll hear him talk about these, these rules of a job later. But we see this guy. He's at some sort of art museum. And he is, in fact, trying to sneak in and, and work on a job. You kind of get the, the indication that he's like a cop or something. But he's actually just a professional thief. And he's trying to get some, some artwork. But they're... They've been comp- they've been compromised. They're figured out by uh, yes. this this thing. These evil people, and like he said, Plan A and Plan B. So he's got some sort of sidekick who he sees. She's kicking some ass. She's up in the up in bad guys. And there's a shootout. And this is when we see one of the Lawrence brothers, Andrew Lawrence. So the director of this movie is not only the director, but he he booked himself in the movie as well. Oh, for sure. If I ever direct a movie, I'll put myself and my brothers in the movie. Like, hello. All my brothers. Even if I don't have brothers, I have two half-brothers, I would put people in this movie simply because. Uh, so this guy uh, who Edge is playing, named Jack Reese, he is a professional con man, but at, in the beginning of this movie, he's trying to do this this job to steal artwork, but it's it's been stolen already. He's been beaten to the chase. So the next day, he approaches who we assume is his, like, I don't know, boss or, or something along those lines, the guy he works for, and it is revealed, Dr. <laughs> Fraser Crane, Kelsey Grammer. Yeah. Uh, hey, something. His, Darius Emmanuel Grouch III, a.k.a. The Rumble. Yeah, so uh, Kelsey Grammer plays a guy in this movie called... The Rumble. The Rumble. <laughs> something, something, scrambled eggs. I don't know the, the theme song to Frasier, but I do know it's a banger. So, uh, wow. Just crazy that uh, Kelsey Grammer's a bad guy in this movie. And I'm so, for it. <laughs> I was reading, like, the making of the movie. When they offered him the role, he said that they expected him not to take it. But he accepted it. He's like, it seems like a fun, mustache-twirling kind of character. So I accepted it. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I bet there, he... was, there was... <laughs> what? What? Most of the film around them like denied them. They said they were this is, movie is unworkable, whatever that means. So they went ahead and they um they filmed in Louisiana instead. <laughs> <laughs> they if if Toronto was kick you out from doing a movie, that's that's not a good thing. I don't think. Like ah oh, no, oh. go back to U.S. Yeah, I guess so. It looked like it was filmed uh, in Canada. It filmed great, just not great content. Uh, Kelsey oh, Grammer, you, you you were you were convinced that they're in an airplane. <laughs> It looked like they just put four walls up the whole movie. Uh, Kelsey Grammer is is the rumble, and he says, you know, did you get my painting, Jack? And he says, no, Edge says, Jack Reese. He says, someone knew we were com- coming, and the painting was stolen before we got there, so it's an inside job. Someone beat us to it, and they knew about this, this secret job. And the rumble, Kelsey Grammer, says... Are you a gambling man, Jack? Because I'm an opportunist. Jack, you are $40 million in debt, but I bought your debt. And as he's uh, explaining to Jack that, like, I now own you, we have some really shitty, like, music. The music in this movie is totally, like, stock music that they found online, really it cheap. It was like some real cheap, like Marvel cinematic. Oh my god! Like, it's... The intro comes in. I'm like, what is this? Like, it was really bad. It's so bad. Uh, he says, "Jack, I saved you, and you were supposed to get me my forty million dollar painting." Uh, John, would you like to explain what the 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 Pollock the Pollock? Well, no. So he says <laughs> he needs a bunch of painters. He says Warhol, De Kooning, Pollock bunch of bitches how about i just blow your brains out i'll create my own damn pollock and i was like oh my god i tweeted this out to, to john and he was like john you pollock better watch your 
But um, the actual painting that's in question is a real painting by Asgard Jorn. It's called the dis- they call it the Disturbing Duckling, but the real title is Le Canard Inquitant. Sorry, my French is pretty bad. Which okay. uh, translates to the Disquieting Duckling. So this is actual real painting. In 1959, Asgard Jorn would basically buy paintings from flea markets and just modify them. And people were like, that's vandalism. How could you do it? But he was like, this is real art. You know, I'm modifying things on wow. my own vision. He actually would resell them and make money. So I don't know if it was $40 million worth, but he that's how he actually made his business. Okay. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's like remixing some songs. And then exactly. You, yeah. Uh, well, he says, you don't have my painting, so I'm going to kill you. But I'm not going to kill you. I have a job for you. Jack, it could be your last job ever. If you do this for me, you will be out of debt forever. And I won't own you no longer, but you got to do this. And he says, okay. Sure, Mr. Rumble. What's the job? And he says, There is an under, underworld legend. Uh, it's called Money Plane. Some of the baddest motherfuckers are on that plane. And they're all craving action. You want to bet on a dude fucking an alligator? Money Plane. <laughs> so, I was sold. I heard that. I'm like, I think I texted you right away. I'm like, Brayden, we're doing it. We're going to review it. Watch this clip. We're doing it. So there's a <laughs> raw underground. This is a raw above ground. This is the what I want to see on the third hour of Monday Night Raw. Wow. Okay. So for those keeping score at home, he has offered him a job to go on a plane that has a casino on the plane full of the world's baddest criminals that are all on there. And they play in like obscure gambling and, and weird things. And they're all dangerous and just evil people. And he wants him to go on there and... And win this. And he says, Jack, you're, I'm basically not asking you because you're going to do it. And shows him a picture of his family. Says, I know who your family is. And in one swift motion, I, I'm going to have them killed. So you better do what I say, Jack. You better go on the money plane. It's a fucking money plane. You know, when they were looking for spots for, I don't know, say SummerSlam or New Japan with their whole, like, where are we going to have these these arenas and stuff? Fucking money plane. Money plane. Well, you know the infamous story, right? The uh, the plane ride from hell where, like, Kurt Angle was fighting Vince McMahon and then Brock Lesnar interfered and Taker and all this. This is that was pretty much this movie. This and is that movie. Like, this is, this is a, the plane ride from hell. Money plane. It's a money plane. That's what I'm going to say now. And people be like, what? That's crazy. It's a money plane. And it doesn't matter. It's a, that's the new word. Money plane means something that's just so blasé that you, it doesn't matter. Don't even question it because it's a fucking money plane. A casino with criminals yeah, in the, the way sky. Yeah, it was it's an international airspace, so it's untouchable by any government. There is billions of crypto on there and millions in cash. So it's definitely like the money plane. It's the money plane. And you're getting on this plane. So, uh, yeah, there's cryptocurrency, hundreds of millions of dollars. You have to go undercover. And I have here in my notes, holy shit, this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I really came on here to be Mr. Positive uh, because, you know what, it, I, I, I kind of sound like a dick now because I think uh, Kelsey Grammer is a good actor. He's put here in this position of this evil guy. I really think he would flourish in a big Hollywood blockbuster movie if he were to be like some sort of B bad guy in this role however mm-hmm. the writing the writing here and like the script is just really bad and and the same could be said for for edge adam copeland he is actually a pretty damn good actor like legit he clearly oh, has yeah. taken acting roles he, he he's in tv shows he's in movies this is just where it suffers from it's just shit like the script is just really bad the the lines he says are just really bad but he's he himself is is a pretty good actor and he's gonna go on this damn money plane um, it shows Jack Reese. He's kind of saying goodbye to his family. Not goodbye, but like, uh, maybe I won't see you because I might die. And his wife, by the way, Denise Richards. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty good cast. I mean, I saw Denise Richards. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, she was a thing, like, golden eye days. But, uh, she was a wild thing? Tomorrow, was it Tomorrow Never Dies? Which, which, a wild thing. Oh, my God. Don't get me started. Wild, wild things. Thing. Yeah, why don't we just do a review? Let's just stop it here and do a review of Wild Things. Is it Wild Things 2? I don't remember. Uh, I saw the first one, and I know exactly which time frame to (laughs) fast forward it to. Uh, Denise Richards is his wife, and he's got a little girl, and uh, he lives, you know, in the in the woods somewhere, and he basically is like, you know, being a good dad, because he's a good guy, this Jack Reese. He may be a pro-con man, but he's a good guy, and... 
the Punisher sneaks into his house. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on in this movie? Like, who else is going to pop up? It's like a, a Royal Rumble over here. Like, just <laughs> it is. Cast, ra- random cast members just jumping Let's in. get B-level celebrities to come into in a movie here. And it's a Royal Rumble because not only Denise Richards shows up, Fraser shows up, but also Tom Jane. The Punisher. The Punisher. <laughs> who's in a movie called The Punisher yes. with a wrestler in it. Kevin Nash. It all yes, ties Kevin together. Nash. Oh my God, See, you're right. It all ties together. Wrestling and movies. So uh, Thomas Jane, as he's kept billed here in this movie, I, n- I never, I never realized if he doesn't call himself Tom or Thomas Jane, who used to be the Punisher in the old movie. He sneaks into his house. You, you're not sure what's happening, but it turns out he's actually best friends with Jack. He's they're like buddy buddy. They're he's his right hand man, and he explains to him that he's got this job and. You know, ever since I lost that hand, and Jack, don't worry, we know you're over your gambling and your problems and and your debts, but as the godfather of your daughter, Jack, you you can do this. I believe in you. So he's basically saying, I'll watch over your family while you're up in the sky with these criminals. And yeah, he he mentions like some like dark past that Edge had, like some gambling issues, which you never really like cover in the movie like they just mention it it's like oh if, are they gonna go deeper into it like what is this gambling issue that J- jack reese had and they don't never even talk about it again yeah he basically said you used to gamble a lot i don't know how much you could gamble like look i'm i i barely gamble i like to play some blackjack and some roulette once in a while but uh or big two really um but how do you lose 40 million in gambling like he he lives with his wife and his daughter. Like they look like they're pretty like okay. Like they're not like yeah. living in a mansion. And I but feel like, like his wife has no idea what he does for a living. <laughs> she's totally clueless. Babe, she's what do you do for a living? Movie. She doesn't know what the movie's about. She's in one scene. She's like, I just play the the nice wife and put your kid to sleep, and that's it. I just uh, he yeah like what? Oh, I don't. Anyways, whatever. He basically says, "Look over my family. I'm gonna go to war in the sky," and we go to the airport international airspace so it's this undisclosed location where the the airport the terminal of the money plane and yeah they're gonna get on this this plane and yeah, so right, right before they get on he has a team of people he has uh, isabella who's like his hired assassin you have uh, iggy who's played by the director andrew thompson and then you have trey who's like his right hand man so he gives him assignments he has iggy stay on the ground to do tech support and then um, Isabella goes in undercover as like a stewardess, and then Trey is like his uh, right hand man, Mister McGillicuddy, as they call him. Mister McGillicuddy, yeah, Michael McGillicuddy is in this movie as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, Andrew Thompson must be a wrestling fan. He's broken with wrestlers. He calls him the Rumble. He calls him McGillicuddy. You like, mean Andrew must... Lawrence? I'm sorry. What did I say? Andrew Thompson. <laughs> Andrew, Thompson. <laughs> yeah. no, Andrew Thompson is not in this movie. I'm pretty Andrew sure Andrew Lawrence, Thompson sorry. is a wrestling fan, but I yes, don't think he's he's in this movie. No, <laughs> Andrew Lawrence. Though. Yes, <laughs> Andrew Lawrence is the director and the guy who stays on the on the the the, the ground, and the rest of the crew go in with fake names. Um, Jack Reese, so Edge's character, is gonna play some guy that no one knows who he is. He's this apparently he's like the leader of the biggest underground like sex trafficking ring, but no one knows what he looks like. So he's pretending to be him to get on board with all these evil criminals, and we get to the plane. Everyone gets onto the plane and cue the second Lawrence brother. It might be the most famous one. Joey Lawrence. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. He does not say that in this movie. There you go. I just saved you five dollars. <laughs> Joey Joey doesn't say it. <laughs> I was waiting uh, for the whole movie. I'm like, he has to say it at some point. He's got to say it, and then he just nah. he doesn't. So, uh, but he's the he's the what the concierge? Yeah, they call him the concierge. Uh, he's you know going through the rules and everything, and giving them all their little digital wristbands with their wallets on it. All I know is I'm gonna tell my mom I watched this awesome movie with uh, Kelsey Grammer and Joey Lawrence, and she's gonna be so in. She's gonna buy yeah, it and be if you so upset. Cast, you're like Thomas Jane, Denise Richards, <laughs> Edges in it, like the Lawrence brothers, all three of them. Like you're sold. How, how could it miss? Uh, Joey Lawrence says, "Look, there's no cameras on board, and there's only criminals. And if we catch you cheating, there is zero policy." Now on this plane. There's a, a lounge, and then it shows this lounge where everyone can just hang out. And there's party favors. There's mountains of cocaine and straws and 
pre-rolled joints everywhere. It's just what all the criminals just need is just drinks, drugs, fun. We see the casino floor. Again, this is all on one plane. Yeah. All on one plane. Just saying. Sign me up. (laughs) There's a casino on it. Then also there is private guest suites where if you need some alone time or, you know, if you if you need to go rest or get some R&R, go hang out Uh, because they also have hookers and strippers on this plane. Uh, This is definitely not Air Canada. Um, So this is I don't understand. I've been on some big planes in my life, but this just like someone needs to myth. This isn't good enough to myth bust, but like myth bust, like how. This could all be on one plane. They Think of like made a, a cruise. It would have been a little bit more. Yeah, visible. like at least a why? cruise would fit all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, like put this on the Jericho cruise or something. Like this sounds like the Jericho cruise. Yeah, it, it definitely does. <laughs> Criminals, hookers, and cocaine. <laughs> Uh, so they're on this plane and it doesn't make any sense. Cause if you know how a plane works, even if there was like multiple floors and I swear there's this movie called like flight plan or something with Jodie Foster. Yeah. And that's like a double decker plane. Even that is way more like a, yeah. to, to scale than this they, movie. They show stock footage of the plane flying. It's a regular small little plane. Like it's not <laughs> this, this, at least this, like make something. Yeah, up. It wouldn't fit. Like all of this stuff would not fit on this plane, but here we are anyways and we meet some of these like criminals that are are on board like all of them look like wrestlers essentially there's like all these scary looking guys there's always gold chains donkey rope if you will bad guys just love wearing chains no offense to anyone who likes to wear chains there's nothing wrong with it but in movies if you're wearing a chain you're probably a bad guy and we meet another lawrence brother (laughs) (laughs) Not Martin Lawrence, but there is Matthew Lawrence, who plays the cowboy. J.R. Crockett. Yes, your now, typical, like, uh, <laughs> gunslinging cowboy looking like um, Yosemite Sam over here. It's It literally is Yosemite Sam come to life. Now, you may know Matthew Lawrence, one of the Lawrence brothers, from Mrs. Doubtfire or yeah. Boy Meets World. He plays Jack on Boy Meets World, uh, the later years. And uh, so now all three Lawrence brothers... I've been conned into watching a movie which I thought was just Kelsey Grammer and Edge, but I've been conned into watching a Lawrence Brothers movie. But I do low-key really love this Disney movie. Sorry, you know Disney Channel? Like they Uh did original movies. Okay. Like they made like their shitty two TV movies. There's this one with all three Lawrence Brothers called Jump Ship. It's on Disney+. Plus. Holy okay. shit. I used to love this movie as a kid. It's like all three of them go on like a cruise by themselves and then like... They jump ship because there's pirates and stuff. Oh, man. It's meant like 12-year-old me or whatever. Love this movie with all three Lawrence brothers. Jump ship. Sounds, Check it out. Sounds like the prequel to Money Plane. It's way – it's like Money Plane times 10 because there's pirates. And this movie nice. doesn't have pirates. But they do have cowboys. And Matthew Lawrence plays the cowboy, J.R. Crockett, which is a great name for a bad guy. Oh, yeah. In my opinion. Uh, so – we have Jack Reese and his whole squad. Um, we have his like assistant, the sidekick of um, is is it Isabella, who is like pretending to be one of the the stewardesses yep. on board, like the the hosts hostess, and all the bad guys keep trying to get at her, like get some action, like hey baby, what's going on? She's like get out of here, and Jack is gonna play some Texas Hold'em, and. Some of the other criminals are like, hey, we know who you are, but we've never seen you. And he's getting a little nervous because he's like, oh, no, they might know who I am. And he starts to play some Texas Hold'em, which I am terrible at. Are you a gambling man, John? No, I'm not. My my older brother was. like, He's addicted to like you know online poker and this and that, like any type of poker. So I would always watch him and I was could never get into it, but I learned it just by observing him. It's really yeah. addictive if you know what you're doing. Uh, so is this movie, if you keep watching it. So there's like epic 80s music that's just so shitty. More stock 80s music. It's so funny. Um, and the worst thing about this, we've now been on the, the money plane for like a good 10 plus minutes now at this scene. Mm-hmm. You know, the little thing you could do to make it feel like we're actually on a plane and not just some shitty like sound set that's not even a sound set. It's probably someone's house. Just add plane noises. That's all I ask. You're supposed to be on a plane. Why don't yeah. we hear the, like, plane sound? You know? 
Yeah, you don't hear that at all. Instead, they have like, ambient <laughs> blue lights just kind of reflecting on everybody. It's like you're in a nightclub. It doesn't look like a plane at all. I swear, like, there's these apps that you can download, like, for people who need help sleeping, who want to listen to, like, fucking whale noises or, yeah. you know, creek noises or whatever. On one, on some of these apps, there is a plane one that you can click, and it's a sound that just sounds like you're on a plane. They didn't even use, use that. that. They didn't even use that in this movie. They're not on a plane at all. Jeez. Wow. So Edge is uh, starting to lose to, um, what is it, J.R. Crockett? And he makes some excuse that he has to to go lay down for a little bit so that he gets his partner, Trey, who's pretending to be McGillicuddy here, to sit in and play against J.R. Crockett. And uh, so <laughs> he goes to, to try to do some sneaky shit, to, to, to take over the plane while his friend is supposed to stay here and play with J.R. Crockett, the cowboy. Um, we see his friend... Katrina, who's pretending... Sorry, Katrina's the actor. Uh, Isabella, who is pretending to be the, the stewardess. And a bad guy, one of the criminals, says, Hey, honey, you want to, like, get with me? And she says, No, sorry, it's against the rules. And uh, in maybe one of the best lines of the whole movie, he says, Well, honey, rules were supposed to be fucked. You want to get fucked? Some of the v- villains in this are terrible. <laughs> His name is Reed. He's like the henchman to the, the guy Ivan, who's like this big Russian mob leader. Wow. And just like the whole movie, he's trying to get with Isabel. Of course, all the girls on the plane, he has to get with the one girl who is undercover. And it's just ridiculous the lines that he said. It's like, how do you get away with saying these things now? <laughs> but she said it. Hey, did you Rules. recognize the, the concierge's uh, bookkeeper? His like right-hand man? No, who was it? He's uh, Mikey from The Sopranos. He's the one who plays like Uncle Junior's like uh, right hand. Oh, man. okay, yeah, yeah. He's a little bit older now, but I, rec- I recognize him right away. Like, where do I know him from? I've been watching Sopranos, so I looked it up, and yeah, it's him. So oh, see, he's God. still uh, getting rules. So as Jack tries to go and and get to the the pilot, we have the new game because it is a game. Like it's a casino on this plane, and all these bad guys get off on like fucked up shit. And the next game they're gonna play is Russian Roulette. Now, they're actually going to play Russian Roulette with an actual gun between J.R. Crockett and McGillicuddy. And he's saying how... J.R. Crockett, uh, one of the Lawrence brothers with this terrible mustache, Yosemite Sam, he keeps saying, I'm undefeated. I never lose in anything. And and I'll go first and just keeps bigging himself up here. Yeehaw! Grabs the gun and shoots himself in the head and dies. Yeah, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Because they kept fighting back and forth saying, you know, who's going to go first, who's going to go first. And McGillicuddy's like, oh, he wants to go first. But the bookkeeper was like, no, that's against the rules. JR has to go first. And the second he picks up the gun, shoots himself boom. right in the bottom of his chin, boom, dead. Wow. So rest in peace, uh, JR Crockett, the, you know, the best the best character in this movie. Yeah, he's the first one uh, eliminated from the money plane, Royal Rumble. Wow. The, <laughs> he's the first one gone, JR Crockett. Poor little out. Um, damn. So only two Lawrence brothers remain in this movie. (laughs) So while this is all happening, Jack Reese, he's distracting the pilot and knocks him out. He gets in there, but of course there's a co-pilot and we now have a fight scene in the cockpit of this plane. And yet again, I'm yelling at the TV going, this cockpit is so small for this plane. The cockpit would be three times the size if you, that was supposed to be the size of the plane that you're pretending to be on. But I digress. So now there's a fight scene. He's beating him up. He's punching him out, knocks him out, and grabs a hold of the, the plane. He kind of starts tilting the plane, and then he gets fish hooked, but he ends up killing this guy, and he, maintain, he maintains control of the money plane. Edge is driving the money plane. He's flying it. And we cut back to the, the casino and Joey Lawrence pulls out a gun and shoots a criminal in the head and pulls out an ace that he was hiding in his sleeve. He says, we don't accept cheating. Zero tolerance. We told you. So, of course, criminals are going to cheat. There's so much <laughs> random violence in this movie. At one point, uh, one of the criminals is just sitting at the table, and the waiter just comes like a, like behind him and says, "Does anybody want any drinks?" And he turns around and punches him right in the nose <laughs> for no reason, no explanation at all. The guy works on the plane, and you're just punching him out. Oh my god! Okay, what a great movie. 
This is fantastic. Um, the one, one part that you, you missed was um, when Jack Reese was trying to go to the cockpit. He has to, like, act drunk. And it's if you go back and watch, it's hilarious. Like, Edge acting drunk. Acting like, drunk. Movie, <laughs> and he grabs the bottle and just, like, starts, like, going back and forth. That was probably the best acting I saw in the whole movie. It was a five-second pose. Yes. Uh, so now McGillicuddy, who's just kind of, like, Trey is, is McGillicuddy. And he's, like, Jack's assistant, filling in for him but now he's got to play all these fucked up games that are happening he had his funds transferred to him and he's like uh, i don't want to play these anymore the next game they're gonna play you mentioned earlier that there may or may not be snakes on this plane there actually isn't but there's snakes in this movie kind of sort of so they all get handed ipads and this game is called man versus cobra each criminal has to pick a time so you could say five minutes two minutes Trey, a.k.a. McGillicuddy, picks 16 minutes, I believe. 17 now, minutes. He 17, 17 minutes. But it ended in 16, so he, he won by uh, closest to it. They all watch on the iPad as they, somewhere in an undisclosed location, not on the plane, a man is in like a cage with a giant cobra. However, clearly they used all the money in this movie on Kelsey Grammer and Edge and not the plane or the snakes because this was just like some string that was like on a guy. I don't really know what this was. They this didn't make sense because in the beginning of the movie, they explained that they could do anything on this plane because it's international airways, whatever the case may be. So I'm not yeah. expecting things to happen on the plane. No, yes. they are watching it remotely somewhere else on their iPad. And it's like, how is that legal now? Like, eh. yeah. Not that this movie has to make any sense, but that made no sense. No, you're actually onto it. So the premise of this movie, when I watched the trailer a few months ago, makes you think that legally anything can happen on this plane because, like you said, it's not on an, it's not in a country. It's like in the air. So it's like when someone is pregnant, which they shouldn't be flying. But say you you have a kid, you 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 give birth to a kid on a plane. What? What is their, like, technical nationality? Are they, like, born, you know? What, what is, that'd be a sticky situation. It's just like this. You can get away with doing criminal activity on a plane. But then when we get into the meat of the movie, they're not even doing it on the plane. So it's no. so shitty. It's so stupid. I was uh, caught into watching this movie. I yeah, I was tricked. That I didn't pay back. Yeah, <laughs> money plane. Yeah, I want my money back plane. So, uh... Like, McGillicuddy is freaked out that he has to watch on his iPad of just guys dying from snakes. And then, like, another game where a guy gets his hand cut off. And there's all sorts of shit, like, that's going on. And he's just freaking out. And then there's a next game where it's a guy who gets thrown into, like, a pool of piranhas. And -hmm. then just gets eaten alive in, like, what, a minute, 50 seconds? Yep. You can see his bone... And Trey wins again. He's winning every game. He's, he's on the just, roll. And he's like trying not to throw up and stuff because he just does not want to be here. But he keeps winning. So he's like, hey, I'm not bad at this uh, this thing. But it, it's made me it's made me wonder, like in Austin Powers, that you you have the lasers with sharks and then they couldn't get lasers. So he's got sea bass and stuff. Yep. But if if you were to, to throw someone into a pool of piranhas, like would they just straight up like kill you? Because I, I went to the aquarium in Toronto not long ago, and like they have a tank full of piranhas that you can get real yeah. up and close to, and they look terrifying. So I feel like I read somewhere I, don't, I didn't get into details, but something about like piranhas really not being that aggressive. So I don't think that like is oh, true. Okay, I mean I don't think they did it on MythBusters or not. I don't know if anybody wants to attempt that, but supposedly they're not that you know they don't really attack you unless you provoke them first, I guess. Unless you're, they're really hungry. Yeah. You know, you haven't fed them in a while, but they do look very nasty. And there is movies called Piranha, but these piranhas are not on a plane. It would have been way cooler if the piranhas were on the plane. Yeah, I mean, you have all this stuff where you can't just put a pool in the plane. You already said there's a casino and a sauna and all this other stuff. Like, just put a a pool. Put a hot tub, and then you trick a guy into getting into the hot tub, and then, ah, there's piranhas in it, and it's piranha tub. Obviously, they didn't have enough money, so it looks like they just took stock footage from some website somewhere on the dark web and just used it. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't understand. It's like they just fell off halfway through this movie. Uh, so this guy is like winning all these these games, even though he's not about it. Uh, it cuts to some other guy eating a banana really weird. That's Andrew Lawrence. And this, this is actually funny because they show him like eating a banana. And then I swear they must have filmed him like 
not knowing he was being recorded because he says this job sucks and he's the director <laughs> of the movie <laughs> so i feel like they, they caught him just like upset like eating on his lunch break and oh. they used it for the film oh my god he's just like huh i'm eating a banana because this yeah. sucks it's like yeah dude yeah, uh no. nothing's going up on nothing's really happening on that plane either so don't worry <laughs> you're not missing much it's all happening on land uh it cuts to this like really shitty music and then you have uh, I think it's I think it's Isabella pretending to like give a guy a dance, but then she starts to beat him up and then rips a guy's ears off. Yeah, not Unico style with the nose, but the ears instead. She bites so the right? She both hands, one on each side of the guy's head, and what rips off the ears. Uh this whole movie is just like, would this actually happen? Could this actually happen? I don't think so- someone could have the power to physically rip someone's ears off the sides of their head but who am i to say that yeah this girl does a lot of uh pretty strong stuff in this movie that we'll get on to later but strong style strong style isabella for sure Probably she, my favorite character of the movie i think yeah she turns this guy into mick foley ripping the ear off here uh just ter- just gross uh just stop and she doesn't even have any witty line after like oh can you hear me now or something like <laughs> funny. Just, uh, she could have said something to like you know, some witty line to make it like even more terrible. But no, it's like we're actually gonna have to take this seriously. Like, this actually happened. Like, I'm like, oh come on. At least if you if you know this movie's uh, bad, just just roll with it. Make it all camp at this point. But they decided uh, not to. Fuck, damn. Uh, I bet you the Lawrence brothers thought this was pretty badass. But it's oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it cuts to Jack Reese Edge. He's now flying the plane, and he talks over like he he has to communicate with the Rumble Kelsey Grammer, who's basically like, hey. Get my fucking money. What are you doing on that plane? And Kelsey Grammer, the, any of the scenes, I bet you he filmed this in one fucking day. Cause it's he's just, in the same, yeah, he's in yeah, the same room. He's just in his house. He's just at his house, the whole thing, with a cigar in like every shot. I think I need a photo of Kelsey Grammer with a cigar from this movie sitting down, like framed, like in my just house somewhere, or like on my wall just at put least. It, put it up there next to Frankenstein behind you. That'd be perfect. Oh, perfect, exactly. <laughs> So he keeps communicating with him like via FaceTime or something. But then Jack is also talking to his friend, the Punisher, Tom Jane, who basically Tom Jane is saying, hey, uh, I looked into that job you were doing about the painting. And it looks as if the Rumble already owns that painting and was just putting you on to make you agree to do this money plane heist. So I think he set you up. I think you're in on something that you you're you're in over your head. I think he's going to like fuck you over even more. So just watch out. Um and then it cuts back to Kelsey Grammer, the Rumble, and he has a guy shot and the guy's head like splatters all over the that carpet. Made no sense at all. I at first I thought it was Iggy, the guy that's working with Jack Reese on the ground. I'm like, "Oh, they kidnapped him." No, yeah. just some random guy that just, just some other hostage. guy. And then the rumble, Kelsey Grammer gets really upset that there's blood everywhere. And he's like, come on, get that out of the, how am I going to get that out of the carpet? It's, it's going to stain. Yeah. He uh, tells his uh, henchman, whose name is P Roach to shut him up. So he shoots him in the head and he's like, you fucked up my terracotta, which is like the material that the towels is made out of. He's like, I told you to, to shut him up, not shoot him up. I'm just uh, like, oh, Jesus Christ. Shoot him up. Yeah. Shoot him uh, up. Thank you. Maybe that would have made this movie a lot better. So, we cut back to the plane and Isabella is, is now tr- killing other bad guys. Uh, one of the, the main criminals, they're kind of onto McGillicuddy and Isabella, uh, Isabella, like they're, they're like, we know you're doing something on this plane other than just playing the games. And this is where Isabella cracks a bottle of like vodka over a guy's head, repeatedly shanks him like prison style, and then takes another bottle, breaks it, and takes like the big chunk of that's like the big bit of glass from a broken bottle and basically crowns him jabbing the broken bottle into the top of his head, therefore killing him and blood going everywhere. That was probably my favorite part of the movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, first of all, it's, kill. It's, it's the same guy that's been hitting on her the whole movie, Reed, like one of the henchmen. And he yeah. goes over there. He's like, what are you doing? He says something about like, did you steal the cookie from the cookie jar or some like really ridiculous line? And then she, of course, uses her like sexuality. She like takes his hand and puts it on herself just to distract him. He's like, oh, OK, everything's fine now. And then boom, hits him over the head with the two bottles. Just that whole sequence with the stabbing and the bottle hitting. I'm like, this is probably the best part of the movie. 
it's the best kill, I'd say. Like, it's oh, yeah, just sure. getting stabbed up by a bottle. Like, it was a prison stabbing. It was just yeah. stabbing and shanking and all that stuff. Uh, wow. What a what a violent death. I was not expecting I mean, this. This guy deserved it. It was the same guy that was the whole movie just kind of like, you know, smacking her ass and just trying to get, you know, her, oh, yeah. her attention. So he definitely saw it coming. Uh, she did not did not have a clever line after killing him with the bottle. What would what no. would be one I like? Damn, um, bottles up, bottoms up. I don't you know. You just got served. I don't know. You can say something. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, the, gla- the glass is half empty. I don't know. Ah, uh, I like something. it. We'll go with that one. You should have wrote this movie. So we we, <laughs> we see now McGillicuddy. Uh, Trey, he's getting his ass kicked by the other guy in the white tee and the big donkey rope chain, and he's getting his ass kicked, but Isabella comes in, basically super kicks him into this wall, and he gets electrocuted and dies. What? Yeah, Isabella's a badass. She's, like, either auditioning for the new Street Fighter movie or Mortal Kombat or something. Like, every kill she had was just straight fatality, so I liked it. We now see uh, a shot of Vanguard 1. I thought the same thing. I'm like, why could it edge instead of Thomas Jane got and Matt Hardy for this role? It would have been perfect. Just Matt Hardy in his in his compound, just controlling Vanguard One would have made this movie so much better. Yeah, I I would I think Matt Hardy would be okay with showing up in Edge's movie. Oh yeah, why not? <laughs> so Vanguard One is there, and Tom Jane, Edge's friend, he's in control, and it's a drone with a gun. And when I say a drone with a gun, I don't mean a drone that's got like in a built in. Like, gun system that can shoot out of the drone? No, 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 no. That would make sense. Instead, it's a drone that's literally got a handgun just attached to it <laughs> that he can fire from. What the fuck? <laughs> you, you, you've never seen that in stores? They sell that. <laughs> what? Like, I'm thinking, like, spoilers, but Breaking Bad. Near the end of Breaking Bad, Walter White hooks up this crazy drone gun thing, and people were so on that, like, oh, that could never happen. It wouldn't work. This could never happen. A gun does yeah. not work like that. It's just propped up, sitting below the drone, yeah. flying how's around. It, how's it How's it going to fire? How's it going to pull the trigger? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But oh, my God. It is what it does. He uses the the drone with the gun to save uh, Iggy, who's on on the ground. He's getting shot at from these baddies from the Rumble, but the drone is for the save, I guess. Uh, yeah, and at, then, at this point, Rumble was already kind of like um, tipped suspicious. off. Suspicious. He thought that Reese was coming after him, so he goes and sticks his people onto uh, Iggy. So the drone and the gun shoot up all these trained professionals. These trained professional killers are just just beaten by a drone with a handgun and then and then it cuts to it cuts to tom jane who just goes sucks to be you pal that's the line that's the all right okay uh (laughs) it cuts to jack reese who's facetiming the rumble again while still flying this plane somehow and says hey maybe i don't work for you anymore maybe what if you're a little bitch (laughs) I wrote that down, just, and it made no sense. He's like, I've been up here above the clouds. I don't know. It's giving me some perspective. I've been thinking, what if I don't work for you? What if you're actually just a little bitch? And what if this money wasn't actually yours anymore? I'm just oh, like, oh, my Jesus. Oh, my God. It's like they just add the swearing. To like, that'll be the line. That's the cool line. Just swear. Because Kelsey Grammer swearing is like shock value to me. I don't want to see Dr. Crane Frazier. I don't want to see Frazier swear. Like, I'm like, oh, that's weird. So when he yeah. swears, it's like, oh, but it's Edge. It still sounds awkward and like really forced. And mm-hmm. he's like, what? I'm not a little bitch. Uh, and the rumble says, I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet. I don't care about any of these criminals on here. They're bitches compared to me. I'll kill them all. Now bring me my money. Ah, uh, fatal mistake. Never say your name and what you're doing, because you never know who might be recording. You never know who could be rolling on things you're saying. Come on. Nixon knows that. Didn't he record everything? Uh, Tom Jane is in Edge's house, and he's making some pasta. Hey, where the hell is uh, Edge's wife? <laughs> yeah, where's Denise Richards? <laughs> like, Punisher just making spaghetti over here, chopping up the vegetables, and she's nowhere to be seen. It's like, I think he's taking care of the house a little bit too much for you, Edge. <laughs> Why is Denise Richards just not gone now? She's just cool. She only, with... got, she only got paid for two scenes and she was out of here. She's like, fuck this money playing shit. Yeah, the world is not enough, I guess, for Denise Richards. Uh, so Tom Jane's making pasta, and some dudes come into the house, and he basically just shoots them all up. Because he's the fucking Punisher. Why wouldn't yeah, he, he just with shoot the Punisher? Them? Why the hell would you ambush the Punisher? Haven't you seen the movie? Yeah, that's just a really bad idea. Uh, we cut back to the plane. 
and all the good guys now they've killed all these these like villains and they start to gather up the money they access the vault because you know this plane is called the money plane and it's a casino on a plane that carries not only like hundreds of million dollars in cryptocurrency, which they can then all of a sudden easily access and transfer away, but also the, the, the plane just has this really shitty little safe. You'd figure if there's so much money going into this, they'd buy an actual safe. This looks yeah. like the safe that you'd find in a hotel, like at your Holiday Inn that you're staying at. <laughs> they get there and they're like, oh, this safe is not what we expected. It's biometric. How are we going to figure it out? And then Isabella just picks up the guy's finger and just puts it on the safe and it unlocks it. And I'm pretty sure I saw a couple bags of coke in there as well. They didn't really show that later on, but I'm like, I'm sure those are drugs in the corner. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so they get into I know, these I know a bag safe. of coke when I see it. Just saying. <laughs> I've watched Scarface, buddy. <laughs> I've watched Money Plane. Very similar <laughs> movies. So they steal all the money. They take all the money and they say, look, we can split these like, what is it? Like $40 million, four ways. And the rest of it, we're transferring and giving away to charities. Isn't that sweet? I actually thought, hey, that's a pretty good idea. You're criminals, but you're giving away all the money to charities. I don't think they kept any of the money. Like I'm watching it and I had to rewind it a couple times, but they didn't keep anything. They're like... He asked them if they want to split it, and they all said no for whatever reason. So he did all this shit, and you're not to keep any of the money. And then they go ahead and just give to charities. Yeah, UNICEF and the, the refugees of Syria, this and that. So they kept zero of it. And then the actual physical cash, what do they do with the actual physical cash? Well, first of all, I'm sorry that you rewound parts of this movie because not yes. only did you have to watch them once, but you watched them twice. But, uh, yeah, they mentioned that like they each get like a little cut of it, but then near the end, they, they kind of add that up. Uh, so... They start giving away the money because they don't want to keep it because they consider it blood money. And they start to put on, like, what are they going to jump out of a fucking plane? They're getting, like, their parachutes, their jumpsuits on. They're making a great team. And, this, sorry. The whole time Rumble is on FaceTime. This plane has the best Wi-Fi in the world because as they're flying out of the plane, <laughs> you just see, like, Frazier just watching them, like, what they're doing. He's like, no, my money. <laughs> so bad. So, he says to, to uh, the Rumble, like, hey. Um, I told you in the beginning that all you need is a great team and you need a proper diversion because the way things are, are different than the way things appear. And basically he took the clip of him saying, I'm the baddest motherfucker on this planet. I fucking don't, I'll kill all these people. He plays it over the PA system of the plane. Therefore, all these criminals, Joey Lawrence, who's the, the head guy of this, makes a call to the land and so says, what? yeah. Whoa! Take care of this. Give him some brotherly love. So he's calling. He's calling Melissa from Melissa and Joey, and saying we're gonna kill the Rumble. So now the Rumble is like shooketh. He's like, oh no, I got screwed over. And Jack Reese Edge says, it's an eye for an eye. I and got so excited. I thought they were gonna go with the match. <laughs> oh my and god! They're gonna have an eye for an eye match now. In the shittiest jumping out of a plane scene I've ever seen in a plane movie. Like, what? Like, Have you ever opened I, up a plane door and it's just pitch black? Cause that's what yeah, it, it doesn't <laughs> look like this. And it's like, they're not getting sucked out. It's just fine. They're just opening this thing. And you could totally see it's not a plane. Like, the clips of the guys jumping out. It's so... It's yeah, really, when they're really in the cockpit, late. you see, like, the, the, the outside of the plane. You could tell it's just, like, a, a, a picture just floating in the air. <laughs> So, so Edge then jumps out of the plane. Woohoo! Puts up his, his devil horns and the pyro comes off. And on this day, <laughs> um, he spears him in the air. Yeah. Jeff Hardy's hanging from the plane. Oh my God. So they escape with all the money. But now all of these criminals have made calls and, and like, like, I don't know, deals for all their people to go after the rumble. And then we see in, in Kelsey Grammer's final scene in the movie here, he's at his Scarface mansion. <laughs> he's getting locked and loaded because all these people are coming on his property ready to kill him. He shoots his henchmen for no reason. The one person he has to help him, he kills for no apparent reason. Look, uh, I've already said the best part of this movie is when Kelsey Grammer is explaining the money plane. Second best part of this movie is Dr. Fraser Crane with a fucking gun, locked and loaded, just screaming... You <laughs> forgot how they found him because they cut back to a flashback in the beginning of the movie, and uh, Jack Reese puts like a little tracker under his table. Oh yeah, like how did you course. not see that? It's a giant black box on the <laughs> bottom of the table, and somehow 
he's working with Joey Lawrence and they found I don't they don't even explain like if it's a bad movie try to do some explaining there's no explanation at all how did they find him was Edge working with them like there's no explanation they just show up to his house and yeah he goes all Tony Montana on them with the yeah his little friend I couldn't believe it Frazier goes Tony Montana is the right way to explain this just epic as this is his his swan song he dies here shooting and trying to protect himself but he goes out in a blazing glory just shooting up just crazy Three months later, we are taken to Istanbul. Wasn't really expecting that, but we're in Istanbul now. Like drive sure to three. Are. Sure they are. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, they 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 see we see this like famous art museum, and there's these two like I don't know security guards, and they open up the famous painting they're looking for, and when they open it up. The, what is it? The black canard? The black canary? The, the disturbed the duck, duckling. The ugly duckling? The disturbed duckling? Instead, it's been swapped out, and it's just a dick butt. <laughs> it's just a picture of the ugly duckling with a middle finger. They've That's what conned. you guys need to put in the BDE. I, I can draw that my, myself for you guys. But yeah, it's a stick man just putting the middle finger up. What a, what a piece of art. That was perfect. It's, it's essentially dick butt. And yeah. then we see Edge, Jack Reese. He's at home with his family. He's got chopped wood behind him. Denise Richards randomly pops up again. <laughs> Denise Richards is here. And for the first time in the movie, he takes his hair out of his ponytail. Yes, so I Edge is that. just He's got his luscious locks flowing. You think you know me. And he's all happy. Everything is okay. And Tom Jane, his buddy, his friend says, Hey, you made a lot more money than you think you did. In fact, you can split that $40 million between you and your crew. And Jack says, No, no, no. I also include you. We split it five ways. So all all of this hard work of them trying to, you know, save himself from this debt, he's cleared his debt. The rumble is dead, and now they also have millions and millions of dollars and can live their life happily. And we fade to black the end of the money plane. What a masterpiece. Wow. What a masterpiece. Wow. <sighs> wow, geez, there's so much to, to just uh, unpack out of this movie, but wow. Uh, Adam Copeland, Kelsey Grammer, stealing the show here in Money Plane. Okay, so John, uh, what, are some, what are some thoughts on this movie? And before you, you go into them, I'm really sorry for making you watch it. <laughs> hey, when I saw that IMDb gave it a 3.2 out of 10, and I'm like, oh, this movie, you know. That's generous. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at like the reviews. It has like 25% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm looking at some of the, the ratings, and the Daily Beast called it the dumbest movie of 2020. You have another review that says, this is the kind of movie that will be likely to be forgotten about within a matter of weeks. No, it will not, because this review <laughs> will live on forever. It makes Somebody it search his money plane infamous. And we'll find this movie. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I expected it to be bad, but like like I said, if it's going to be bad, at least do like bad puns, like jokes. No, they, they took this movie seriously, I felt like, and that's what made it bad like not even a good bad movie just a bad movie i i agree with you so i i obviously i wanted to do this review because just watching the trailer alone you're like oh this looks so bad it's got to be great it's got it reminded me the trailer reminded me of sharknado and yeah. sharknado like they know expecting. yeah yeah sharknado's got the really shitty lines and the stupidity but they're doing it on purpose because that's what they do in this movie it's 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 like they start off with the Sharknado premise, like let's make something that's so fucking ridiculous, but then they try to make it r- like like serious. And I just think it went the wrong route. I really think that they could have had a Sharknado on their hands, like something that was so stupid, so ridiculous that people would want to watch more of it. Like you could have Money Plane Two, the Money or Plane. Um, I just well, look at, I, <laughs> looking at the production of the movie. The reason why it failed was because they didn't have enough time and enough money. Because it says here. The project's low budget and rushed schedule frequently required Lawrence to improvise and to adjust shooting based on which sets were available. He says, we were literally building the plane set while we were shooting. We built and shot in those corners. We had to do that all the time. So he was basically building the set as they were shooting the movie. So that would explain a lot. Okay, that does it. Like, they weren't on a plane. Like I already said, no. the biggest gripe is you just need plane sounds. And there was barely any plane sounds. You didn't see any planes I- at all. I'm pretty sure they're in the same room that um, 
Rumble filmed his scenes. They just put plane doors. <laughs> they just put things up around it, like curtains up on the walls, and called it a plane. I don't understand. Uh, it's just. It's like the idea is actually, it reminds me of all these like sh- shitty movies. Think of that movie, what is it, like Stone Cold Steve Austin did, WWE films, where he's like, all the criminals are put on an island. It's essentially it's Battle Royale. Yeah. yeah, it's mm-hmm. essentially Battle Royale. What's it called? The, the Condemned? Condemned? The Condemned. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, so you have a ridiculous premise that could be a lot of fun, but it just was not executed at all, like I, properly. It's just so strange. This should have been like, so this could have been a cult classic for especially wrestling fans because it's edge who's the main character so it's just so weird to see edge in this in this role but like i said he's not the problem i don't find it's the actors in this that are the problem you could just tell it's really just been thrown together they just threw some shit at a wall or sorry threw a plane up in the sky with some money not enough money and then this is what came out because you know what edge isn't a bad actor and neither is is grammar you know he's he's kind of out the game a little bit now a little older but it's just so weird this this premise of a money plane a casino with bad motherfuckers yeah the, the producers strange. said say that they were inspired by movies such as oceans 11 and con air <laughs> <laughs> that shows, it shows. Yeah, I mean the soundtrack in Ocean's Eleven is so comparable to the soundtrack in this movie. <laughs> oh, you mean like the wannabe <laughs> Thor music or Iron Man music that they use? Yeah, yeah the soundtrack was so bad. They clearly did not put money into any any aspect except paying the people. That I they I looked up pay. the composer of the movie. I'm like, let me let's see who actually made the music, and this is the only thing he's ever done. Okay, so, well that explains yeah. a lot. They should have got me. <laughs> I kind of wish they, they actually would have got Andrew Thompson to write this instead of Andrew Lawrence because his, his, his uh, news reports on post-wrestling are a lot better than this movie. Uh, yeah, I can't even, like, again, the, 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 the scene that's in the trailer of, uh, uh, sorry, Kelsey Grammer and, and Adam Copeland, Edge, explaining is the only funny thing in this movie because you expect paying for this movie which, you know, maybe you did or did not, that that you're going to get these extreme things on this plane, and then it turns out, no, we're just going to have you on a plane watching an iPad for, like, five seconds. We didn't see a guy fucking an alligator. They yeah, promoted like, that in the trailer. That's what is it? advertising. Chekhov's gun, right? You talk about a guy fucking an alligator, I best see a guy fucking an alligator, and I didn't see a guy fucking an alligator. There was no alligator. alligators or fucking in the movie. It was just Yeah, funny. none. Come on. Zero alligators, zero fucking... Uh, but uh, I don't know if I'd give this three out of ten, or was it three out of five? That yeah, three point two out of ten was the <laughs> overall rating. They better make a sequel, Money Plane to Alligators on a Plane. Yeah, I, I really, I really I laughed at some of these parts because it, it genuinely has some ridiculous shit in it. Um, but then you do kind of realize that it went the wrong direction. It should have been more of a campy ridiculous instead it's ridiculous trying not to be so uh b level movie c level movie really and i i can't say i would see edge or kelsey Grammer really promoting this movie as heavily as some of their other stuff which i kind of went through the twitter feeds and was like oh you promoted it but clearly you watched it and didn't think it was very good uh, yeah. but it wasn't his fault it was i blame the lawrence brothers yeah. For a lot, lots of my problems, really. But I blame the Lawrence brothers. Uh, some eye bleach for me is going to be watching some brotherly love tonight. I got to check out what's that movie you said? Jump Ship? On yeah, Disney Jump Plus. Ship. I, I mean, it's probably it it's probably just as fucking bad, to be honest. But I Do loved you remember it when, when I was 13. Um, I think it was Matthew Lawrence had like a Power Rangers knockoff. I forget Whoa. what it was called. Oh, oh man. Go. Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. It was that like sounds those, lit. Yeah, it's basically like a Power Rangers knockoff. There's a whole bunch of like uh, what a Battle Borgs came out around that time. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, I do know check it. it. Yeah, out. that's fantastic. Well, uh, check out Money Plane. I know we didn't really sell you on it, but we gave you our honest review. Um, I'll forever keep rewatching the the clip of Kelsey Grammer in the suit with the cigar, just swearing, calling himself a badass motherfucker and. All this stuff, but yeah, if you uh, have to watch one scene from the movie, watch that as well as the part with Isabella just destroying the guy with the <laughs> with the bottles, just killing him. <laughs> or the best part of the movie. That's it. You can skip the rest. We, we saved but, you an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. it was short. I got I got to admit that the movie was like a lot shorter than I was hoping. I saw an hour and twenty minutes. I was so happy. I'm like, oh my god, if it was. It wasn't even that. It was eighty two minutes. Oh my god. Okay. I'm perfect. pretty sure it was eighty two minutes long, which you know is good. I couldn't imagine watching yeah. any more of this. 
Uh, I want to see the yeah. scenes. I want to see what didn't make this movie. I want the <laughs> commentary to... tracks. I want it all. I want I want it all. Money Plane revisited. <laughs> I want prequels. I want to know more about the people who made the plane. You never get to see what happens to Joey Lawrence's character after. He's like the evil concierge guy, but he's like gotta, slick gotta, and gotta, everything. You gotta, gotta save it for the sequel or the prequel. Yeah, you know? yeah. I feel like I feel like the the, the sequel is going to be uh, Joey Lawrence kind of with his next. His first money plane didn't work out because he got robbed. But uh, I, wow, just what a film! It has everything you could ever want in a movie. So go check out Money Plane. Wherever you find your movies uh, now, today. Now, no, don't, don't. Just don't, don't, <laughs> don't watch it, please. Go watch anything. Go watch Cheers with, with Kelsey Grammer or Frazier. Go Frasier. watch SummerSlam 2005. <laughs> go watch SummerSlam 2005. Go, go watch, watch Wild, Wild Things. Things and go watch The Punisher. And there and you run, go. And Jump Ship. Don't forget and jump, jump Ship. ship. That's it. There you go. Save wow. You. That's our review of our, that's our, our analysis of Money Plane 20. 20. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you, John, for jumping on board. See what I did there? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, the next time, if, if I ever take a plane, I'm going to watch this on a plane. That's going to be so fucking meta. I'm going to do that. If I ever, if borders ever open, I'm going to take a plane to Toronto to the BDE and I'm going to watch Money Plane. Money Plane. I can't wait. I'm going to get the, the, the poster framed. No, I actually just want the picture of Kelsey Grammer with the cigar. I want that on my wall. I can't get enough. Um, if you can't get enough of listening to us talk about ridiculous shit, well, again, patreon.com slash up next is where you can find it. Uh, we had our extreme month. With Freddy Got Fingered. Freddy Got Fingered was a better movie than Money Plane. There, I said it. (laughs) Um, We have so many reviews up there. We just did The Karate Kid with myself and Davey. Um, And this week we have SummerSlam 2005 featuring, yes, Edge versus Matt Hardy, but also Dominic and Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero and Hulk Hogan versus Shawn Michaels. Just insanity. Um, The Sturgis Bike Rally that just happened with Chris Jericho and Fozzie. Uh, Smash, and Smash Mouth? Uh, yeah, Smash Mouth is causing a scene, huh? I had, a, I, had, I had just a slight feeling it was going to be a bad idea, so, yeah. Yeah, it's like we almost planned it because we did Hogwild 96 last week, so check that out as well on the Patreon. But again, patreon.com slash up next. $5 a month gets you all those shows and all the other shows, best match ever and all that stuff. Hey, I'm but, looking forward to, uh, I know what you did last summer with former WWE writer Freddie Prince Jr. So another There we go, there. yes. Yeah. See, wrestlers or wrestling-related people in movies but also john you are are doing the the shot in the dark which is all the other shows that no one really wants to watch but you are watching and you are talking all about it and that is free on the patreon so patreon.com slash up next you can check that out every week when does that show go up usually goes on a tuesday night monday uh, i'm sorry tuesday night wednesday morning after dark I, you know, it gives me some time to watch it and analyze it a little bit. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, I watch the shows that you don't have to watch. I watch the movies that you don't have to watch just to entertain you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, of course, you are on the Zombie Pod where people can go and check out where you've been chatting all about, like, horror movies and, and, and all that stuff. You just did an episode I saw about going to the movies in a pandemic, yes. so to speak. Right? So yep. go check that exactly. out as check well. It out. Uh, thank you so much, John. Where can people find you uh, on find the socials? Find me on the Up Next Facebook page, facebook.com slash upnextpodcast. You can find me on Twitter at Evil and my podcast at ZombiePod, Z-O-M-B-I-P-O-D. P-O-D. And I myself, Brayden Harrington, you can find me on Twitter and on Instagram. I am at the Bray D. And uh, we will be back on this free feed with Up Next with me and Davey next Wednesday night. YouTube.com slash Up Next is also where we go live, as well as the Facebook page and group Up Next Podcast and on Twitter at Up Next Podcast. Whew. That's it. I'm going to go get on a money plane. I think that's what we need to do right now. I need some eye bleach after watching this. Watch out for those alligators. Yeah. Take care. Goodbye. And you ever want to bet on a dude fucking an alligator? Money plane. Money plane.